new 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 it's time for a new yeah okay um so uh yeah we were just talking about um old mcdonald on a farm because uh you and your kiddo react to things uh and he seems to like that song so uh speaking of things to react to though it's still coming so soon close. but the any, photo's been updated any second for the metro m7 do sign up we're going to put a small quantity in I believe later this week uh, it'll be probably next would be next week's new product but we'll run out before uh next wednesday yeah um we'll try to notify people including people on the um discord especially if we don't notify everybody because yeah. a couple thousand signups we'll even have like about 100 boards uh to put in the shop to start but yeah. um do sign up if you don't get notified immediately don't worry we will be making more next up next up uh another raspberry pi 3 camera module came in this is the not no ir this is the normal camera module three that's not wide so it's kind of like the one i think people are going to want the most um this is in stock so there's like the no ir um wide normal and now the everyday wide and normal and we're going to get some photos and videos of all the all the camera options and like what it looks like um this is the new like super fancy 12 megapixel camera module v3 that has autofocus um really high quality uh, great for any camera projects, and it's like the same price as the camera V2. Next up. Next up, uh, we've got an update. This is um, an update to uh, our old familiar favorites, the capacitive touch shield uh, for Arduino. So we've used Penguin to make the fonts really nice. Uh, we've also moved the reset button to be right angle. Um, IRF is still there, and uh, the STEM IQT port is also new. We added that as a little spot. That I could show a quick demo because capacitive touch is nice. This is a beautiful display. Um, and it's got a wonderful capacitive touch screen. I will note, you know, capacitive touch is more expensive than resistive. Um, the resistive touch is out of stock at the moment, but it will be coming back because we have to redesign it. So this is this is the capacitive touch. Let me autofocus it. So the colors are a little bit washed out just because uh it's a screen with a you know, a screen monitor screen with a screen. screen. Let me see if I can talk. Yeah, for this, you might want to turn the light off, actually. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Maybe that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's still washed up, but still. Um, so, you know, it's a nice capacitive touch screen, and we've got this little uh, painting demo for it in Arduino. Um, but you know what? It actually works in CircuitPython as well. It's got the FT2602 uh, or 2606 capacitive touch screen. It doesn't do multi touch, um, but it's very, you know, basic and gives you the 240 by 320 um pixels to touch points and then yeah it's got that 320 by 240 ILI 9341 screen all connected over SPI for the screen and I squared C um for the capacitive touch so the big update uh, as mentioned um you know on the side now we've got this reset button on the side that's easy to get to and a semi-qt port for adding I squared C sensors easily we've also got an update to this uh two inch um, IPS TFT display, um, as people have been noticing, all of our displays have been updated to have iSpy connectors. Uh, iSpy is kind of like STEM IQT uh, for plug and play SPI displays. Um, usually you have so many wires that you have to wire up to get these working. And it means that it's like hard to kind of mount the display far away. And like, I've seen people have a lot of difficulty with um, having the wires break off or short to each other or soldering issues. Um, so this is it running the demo off of a uh, Cutie Pie, so it can show it in the um, overhead. You can show what it looks like. Um, so it just means, and this is actually kind of great for me because I can show off this demo. Here, I'll move the screen protector. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's very enjoyable. So um, you've got this display, and instead of having to solder all the connectors, um, this nice um, flip top FPC connector goes from here to, you know, whatever your dev board is here. I've got a little uh, breakout board to a stomach QT, so the display can go anywhere um easier to mount easier to wire um you know basically a no soldering solution as long as you've got the matching um i spy connector on the other side uh so this is you know otherwise it's the same pinout display same sd card same you know level shifter and we also uh did a nice silk screen as well with penguin all righty next up oh, actually can we go to this one yeah 
Just, okay, then we'll get another one. Yeah, because it's another display. So oh, this right. this is another, uh, this is a 1.44 inch display. It was one of our oldest products, uh, 120 by 120 pixels. These were popular displays, um, popularized uh, for like keychain um, image viewers. I don't know if you people remember those from like a decade ago. Um, it was one of the first displays that was available that's like basically SPI, um, low cost. It's not an IPS display, but it does look quite nice. Um, and the update we've done is like the other displays. Uh, yeah, it has now an iSpy connector as well. Uh, we also made the um, level shifter a little bit smaller to make room. Like, I'm making this way easier now. Yeah, it's if you have this connector, then you can, like, and it's like cool. And it's standardized. It's like everything we're doing yeah. with displays has, and of course, we're going to make feather wings and, and we have a breakout just to get started. Um, but really we were had, a, we saw a lot of customers that were just having issues with, there's just so many wires required and yeah, it's so easy. Exactly. It's like, you can't see it because the display is, and then you want to mount the display. So, you know, this solves. Uh, so you never know if your thing's not working, you never know what, what it is because there's so many wires going around. Yeah. All right. Um, and then you want to do the pliers. Yes. This are uh, another set of crimpers from, um, engineer, they're a Japanese, uh, crimping plier tool company, and they make really good stuff um we've carried their other crimping pliers so you know i do recommend if you're going to be um crimping connectors for uh you know jst or molex you know if you can't afford it try to get the official crimper because of course it's going to work great or just get pre-crimped wires but if you can't um the the crimpers that are made by engineer are really high quality um they have really good results and uh, they have good instructional videos to get you started with them as well so this does like a range of um, sizes you can look at the product page and the data sheet for the specifics but basically your your standard small wire crimps um, that most engineers are going to bump into that are not electrical grade they're electronics grade and i hope they have like a video or advertising they did it's like hey hand me those crimpers over there and someone's like well there's a bunch of crimpers over here which ones are yours engineer yeah what well, oh Oh, I hope so too. Engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, All right, and then and now we're going to do the star of the show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada. Besides our team, everyone who helps Adafruit go, our community, our customers, and all those great things, including a tiny baby who is super awesome tonight, letting us do the show. Is yay, cowbell! It's time for more cowbell. This is our second cowbell. Uh, the first one was the prototyping one. Uh, usually data logger is the second board I make for a platform because um, it kind of covers a lot of stuff. A lot of people want to do data logging and they also just want to have an SD card uh, socket. So this is a cowbell. It goes on a Raspberry Pi Pico board, either the Pico or the Pico W, a beautiful silk screen. Penguin, <clears throat> the data logger um, logo that you guys did, you and uh, Bruce did, yeah. and then uh, the cowbell logo. Um, so this is a simple little board that just kind of slips underneath or over a uh, Pi Cow Bell, sorry, Pi Cow or a Pico, and um, gives you a real-time clock, the PCF8523. It's a low cost. It's a fairly good uh, quality real-time clock. You're, you're going to lose a second or two here, but it's inexpensive, and I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. Um, and then to go with the real-time clock, there's also a uh, coin cell holder. Um, we don't include the coin cell because it makes it very hard to ship if you do. So we sell them separately or you can buy them at uh, your local grocery store. It's a standard CR1220. Um, there's also a reset button because the Pico doesn't have a reset button. So you can press that. Um, a micro SD slot that fits nicely at the end. It's a uh, you know Molex pull-pull type. So you pull it out, pull it back in. And then on the other end is a Stemma QT port for attaching sensors. So this is basically perfectly designed for you have a Raspberry Pi Pico <clears throat> or Pico W and you want to uh, log data from a sensor and you want to timestamp it or you want to um, read audio files or data files off of the SD card. Maybe you want to do something with timing. Um, yeah, it's a three in one board, but very handy. All the little individual pieces are very inexpensive, uh, but they fit uh, quite nicely together. So, you know, I put together a very quick um, little demo that, you know, won't look very exciting, but I can uh, still show wow. it. Um, so, so this is, oh wait, I just turned off the light. Can you hit the autofocus for me? Thank you. Okay. So um, 
this is a Raspberry Pi Pico and I've got it wired up over the STEM IQT to a BME 280. And then you'll notice that this LED flashes every five seconds. Um, I just wrote a little bit of circuit Python code or maybe it was Arduino code, I don't remember, that will read the temperature, humidity, um, and pressure off of the BME 280 uh, through the plug and play connector and then log it to um, the SD card and then flush that data to the SD card. We'll publish all that data as well. Um, but you know, if you wanted to, um, you know, this is stacked on with stacking headers that are soldered in. You can add, um, you know, a battery um, connector if you'd like. You know, I think uh, we stock one from uh, Pimeroni that allows you to run a Pico off of a LiPo battery that can then be recharged. Um, so you can take it for like portable data logging, or again, you want to host data that has uh, time, sensor input, and SD card. And then, you know, I did some simple things like um, if you remove the SD card and then, uh, you know, it says, like, hey, you remove the SD card and it, you know, warns you like your data is not being logged anymore. And then on the bottom, oh, wait, that's the prototype one. So let me get the, the final version. Um, it uses the default. Oh, thank you. It uses the default SPI port on Arduino. Um, if you're using the Philhauer core, same uh, with I squared C, that's for the QT and the real time clock. Um, and if you'd like, there's also a SD card detect pin. You know, that pin will um, short low when a card is inserted or it's the other way around. Basically, you can use it to determine if there's a card physically inside. Um, you can see the little spring that opens and closes when, when something touches. And a lot of the pins are also duplicated over here. So, you know, you can, um, you can get to them. They're also labeled. So if you're like, oh, I can sort of solder a wire if I want to get to other IO pins, or you could like, you know, as seen here, just solder stacking headers and you put it onto a breadboard or uh, another board that you can get to the, the rest of the components, uh, the rest of the pads um, without being in the way of these components. So that is, uh, oh, and then I'll just show on this prototype I do have, I'll show what the battery looks like. So this is when the battery is installed. The prototype is green. Your, your version will be black, but uh, the prototype is green. And then, um, you, you know, once you install the coin cell, it'll keep time for up to seven years. Wow. Okay. And that is new products. New, 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 new,